Today's game will feature the 1927 Pittsburgh Pirates against the 1922 New York Giants in an epic matchup of two iconic franchises from baseball's past. Through the magic of Strat-O-Matic Baseball, Sportman Z brings you a game that would have been a sight to behold in real life. The teams are evenly matched and loaded with stars. So let's get down to the field for the action. Hello, sports fans and baseball fans of Stratomatic Baseball, particularly. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I am here with another 1920s Diamond Gems game, and uh, this particular game is going to be the 1927 Pirates visiting the 1922 Giants. So we are playing in the polo grounds. And uh, the pitching matchup today will be Ray Creamer for the visiting Pirates and Jesse Barnes for the homestanding Giants. And uh, as I, as you can see, I've got the scoreboard right here to follow that, follow along with that. And the inning marker is right here. Um, and so as we get to the lineups, I will go over the lineups which means that the visiting Pirates bat first, and so we will go over their lineup. They will start with Lloyd Wayner as the leadoff hitter and playing center field, followed by Clyde Barnhart, who will be in left field, and then Paul Wayner, Lloyd's brother, will be in right field and batting third. George Wright will be the shortstop. Pi Trainer is going to be the third baseman batting fifth. Um, Grantham will be at second base. I believe that's, is that George Grass? George Grantham. Joe Harris will be the seventh hitter batting, uh, playing first base. Johnny Gooch will be the catcher, and he bats eighth. And Ray Creamer is the pitcher, and he is batting ninth. And so let's go, let's get into this. This lineup is going to be facing Jesse Barnes of the Giants. And the first batter is Wayner, and he gets a 6-7. And that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for the for the uh, Giants is a 1E23. And that is an 18, so I'm uh, guessing that's going to be an out. And it is. So there's one down. Wainer goes 4-3. to three. Um... Uh, both of these teams, very, very good teams. The 22 Giants, of course, won the World Series, I believe, in 1922. And the 27 Pirates lost to the 27 Yankees in the 1927 World Series. And that brings up Clyde Barnhart. And he gets a 6'10", batting right. And that is going to be a fly ball to center. The center fielder is a 2E14. That is an 18, so that'll be an out. So he flies out to center. And with two down quickly, you've got Paul Wayner, Lloyd's brother, coming up. And he gets a 4-6 batting left, and that's going to be a ground ball to second. So he goes out 4-3, just like his brother did, and no runs come in for the Pirates. We go to the bottom of the first inning, and that brings up the Giants lineup. They will start with uh, Dave Bancroft um, at shortstop leading off, and then Heine Groh will be the third baseman batting second. Frankie Frisch will bat third and play second base. Irish Musial will play left field. Uh, Ross Youngs bats fifth and plays right. High Pockets Kelly will be the first baseman batting sixth. Uh, Stengel will be the center fielder, um, batting seventh. Casey Stengel, the former manager. And Earl Smith will be the catcher. And then, of course, the uh, batter will be Jesse Barnes. Uh, the last batter will be Jesse Barnes, the pitcher. So let's get on with that. Bar this, uh, this lineup, Bancroft and the boys facing Ray Cream. And uh, he gets a 211, and he would be batting, uh, he's batting against a righty. So that is going to be a, so, wait, let me see, hold on. Batting, he is batting left. And uh, 
That's going to be an out. It was a ballpark single, so he's out. Um, so he lines out to second base. And Heine Groh is the batter. Heine Groh, interestingly, is on both of these teams, but he only had like 35 at-bats for the um, Pirates. So he wasn't on the team the entire year. 1-4 um, is a pop-out to shortstop. So Groh pops out to the shortstop. That's two down, and that brings up Frankie Frisch. And Frankie Frisch gets a 6-5, and he would be batting um, uh, left. And that is going to be a double. So Frankie Frisch rips a double. And that's the first hit of the ball game, given up by Ray Kramer. And brings up Irish Buse. And Irish Musial gets a 5-7 batting right. And that is going to be a single double asterisk. And that will knock in a run. And the Giants strike first. Ross Youngs is the next hitter. He gets a 111, and that is going to be a that is going to be an out. It's going to be a line out to second base. But the Giants did strike for a run, so we got to go get the one for them. As they have the good one nothing lead. And Glenn Wright will be the batter for the Pirates here in the top of the second. And he gets a 6 3 uh, batting right. And that is going to be a fly ball to left. The left fielder is a 2 E6. That is a 3. Let's see what happens there. That is going to be a single. So Glenn Wright works his way aboard with a hit. And that's the first hit for the Pirates. First hit off of Jesse Barnes. And Pi Trainer is the bat. Pi Trainer getting a 4 6 batting right. And that's going to be a ground ball, second base, double play. Um, is that right? Yeah. So the four, six, three, double play. And, um, that brings up George Grantham and he gets a six, nine batting left. And that is going to be a, is that a home run? That is, that's a home run. George Grantham ties the game with a homer. You don't see that very often from the guys in the 20s. And now Joe Harris is up. And Joe Harris gets 3 6. And that is going to be a ground ball A. Uh, ground ball shortstop A. But, as luck would have it, the Pirates get their first run in the top of the second inning, and we have a 1-1 ball game. We have a tight one here as we go to the bottom of the second with High Pockets Kelly being the batter for the Giants. And he gets a 2-9, and that is going to be a double. So the Giants, the Giants attack just continues here. Kramer has been assaulted here pretty, pretty early. Casey Stengel, the, the uh, Hall of Fame manager, 6'4", uh, batting left. And uh, that's going to be a fly ball left field B. So he flies out. Giving way to Earl Smith, the catcher. 
and he gets a 4-3, and he is um, batting left. And that is going to be a fly ball right field. The right fielder for the Pirates is a 1-E-8, and that is going to be an out, fly out. And that brings up the pitcher. That will bring up the pitcher, Jesse Barnes. And he gets a 1-2, which is a line-out, and that is it. A line-out, two shortstop. And the, um, the Giants get nothing in the second. We go to the top of the third inning. <coughs> Johnny Gooch, the catcher for the Pirates, is the batter. He gets a 3-9. That's going to be a ground ball second. So he goes out 4-3. That brings up the pitcher, um, Kramer. And he gets a 5-11 batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. He goes out 6-3. Two down very quickly here for the Pirates, and Lloyd Wainer is the ball. And he gets a 4-8 batting left, and that is going to be a pop-out to second base. No runs come in for the Pirates. We go to the bottom of the third. Moving right along here in a 1-1 game. Dave Bancroft, the leadoff batter for the Giants, gets a fly ball to right field which gives way to Heine Grow. Heine Grow gets a 2-9. That's going to be a ground ball second. He goes out 4-3. Oh, wait a minute. Well, no, we're in the top of the fourth. Yeah, all right. And uh, finally, Lloyd Wainer. I say finally, I mean, I don't know. Hold on. Oh. Wait a minute. Who, who's, uh, God. Who is up here? No, it was Bancroft. Bancroft got a... Okay, the Giants are up. I, man. All right. Heine Grow. Heine Grow is out. Ah, God. I, I don't know how I'm getting so confused with these two teams. I don't... I, this doesn't really happen very often, but anyway. Um, Grow is up. Um... And maybe he already, he's a ground ball short, 6'3". And Frankie Frisch. And he gets a 6'11", 6'11", batting uh, against a, or batting right. Um, no, batting left. 6'11", is a ground ball first base. All right, so no runs for the Giants in the third. Now we're in the top of the fourth. And Clyde Barnhart is the batter. Or actually, no. Wait a minute. Yeah, he would have to be. All right, so Clyde Barnhart is the leadoff hitter. For the Pirates, he gets a 3-4. That's going to be a ground ball third. He goes out 5-3, and um, Paul Wainer is up. And he gets a 2-3, which is a foul out to first base. Uh, foul out 3. And uh, it's early in the morning, so maybe that's what my where my problem lies. Uh, Glenn Wright is the batter. And he gets a 2-4, and that's going to be a foul out to third base. 
So no runs come in <coughs> for the Pirates. And, and and there is nobody on second base either. I forgot to take him off. We are in a 1-1 game uh, going to the bottom of the fourth. That's what I'm I'm pretty sure of. <laughs> Irish Musial is the batter for the Giants. He gets a 2-7, and that's going to be a single. So now there is a Giants batter board. That is a hit given up by Kramer. And... Uh, Ross Young's is there. Ross Young's gets a 1 8. That's going to be a double. Now they can send the runner. Let's see who that is. That We know that that's uh, Musial, and he is a running one to 15. They're going to try that. And that is a 12. So that was to left field, the left fielder's arm for the, uh, for the, Pirates is a plus two, so he does make it. So that was an RBI hit. Ross Young's with a double that scores the runner. And it, there's a two, now a 2 1 lead for the Giants with a man at second and nobody out, and high pockets Kelly up. And he gets a 3 5, which is going to be a single. And it's a one advance, one base advance single. So runners are at the corners with, uh, with Kramer getting his butt handed to him now. And Casey Stengel is the batter. He gets a 2-8. That is going to be a ground ball. First base B, the infield was not in, so a run does score on that. And um, the runner at first is now Stengel. And it's going to be a 3-1 lead now for the Giants with Earl Smith, the batter. And he gets a 5-10, batting left, and that's going to be a ground ball third base. The third baseman I know is a 1. He's a 1-E-2. So that is going to probably be an out. We'll check it. Um, 13, no, so it's on the E-2, so we will roll that. Oh, wait a minute. He can't be an E2. E21. All right. I tell you, I got to stop playing this early in the morning. Um, and that was a four. So it is an E1. An error on the third, one base error on the third baseman. And the pitcher is up. They're just going to let him hit. And he gets a 1-4, and that's going to be a ground ball double play. So he goes 1-4-3 double play, which is the end of the inning, but the Giants struck for two in the bottom of the fourth, which will take us to the fifth. With the Giants leading in this game, by the score of three to one. And Pie Trainer is the batter. This Pirates offense needs to uh, get going here. They got to get going against uh, Barnes. Four, five, and that's going to be a ground ball shortstop. The shortstop for the Giants is a 2E64. That is a five, though, so it'll be an out. Yeah, if it, if it had gone to the E rating, I don't think it would have been. But um, he goes out six three, and George Grantham is the batter. Or no, wait a minute. No, yeah, George Grantham is the batter, and he gets a five two batting left, and uh, that's going to be a ground ball second base two away four three. Which brings up Joe Harris. And Joe Harris gets a double. So the Pirates trying to do something here against Barnes. They need to get 
you would think they would want to get a, at least a run here and bring it closer. Johnny Gooch is the batter. Johnny Gooch gets a 5-5. Five, five, and uh, he would be batting left, and that is going to be a ground ball first base. And that is the end of the inning. They don't get any runs. We go to the bottom of the fifth with the Giants batting and leading by the score of 3-1. to one. And uh, back at the top of the order with Bancroft. And he gets a 3-5, which is a ground ball first base. And Heine Groh is a batter. Heine Groh gets a 5-7, batting right. And that's going to be a single. Frankie Frisch is the batter. He gets a 1-4. That's a pop-out to shortstop. There's two down. And Irish Buse is the batter. He gets a 6-3 batting right. And that is going to be a an out. It's going to be a line out to second base. And no runs come in for the Giants there. We go to the top of the sixth. The, the uh, Pirates, sorely in need of runs. They're going to lead off with the pitcher. They're going to let him bat. It's still a 3-1 game. It's still pretty good. Um, you know, Kramer isn't pitching that poorly. And he gets a 3-6, which is going to be a strikeout. And this is back in the day. I mean, you know, pitchers just were not taken out that quickly. That is the first strikeout though of the game. Barnes with the first strikeout. Lloyd Wainer comes up top of the order for the Pirates. 3-6 is a ground ball second base. And that brings up Barnhart. And Barnhart gets a 3-4 which is a ground ball third base. No, no runs come across. We go to the bottom of the sixth with the Giants uh, sending up the batting order of Ross Young's high pockets. Kelly and Casey Stengel. That is a 2-4, and that is going to be a, a line out to second base for Ross Young's. High pockets Kelly. And he gets a 5-9. If anybody knows how he got that nickname, I would be really happy to know how that happened. Um, but 5-9 uh, batting right. And that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. He's out 6-3. Uh, there was a viewer of my other 1920s game where I did the 22 Browns against the 24 Senators. And we talked about uh, Baby Doll Jacobson and how he got his nickname Apparently, he was a very good-looking man, and so uh, the women, uh, or uh, at the time, uh, gave him the moniker of Baby Doll. <laughs> I've seen pictures of him. I mean, he's he was a he was an all right-looking guy. I mean, I don't know, but I'm a guy myself, so maybe I'm not an authority to judge that. But anyway, uh, Casey Stengel is up with two down and nobody else. And uh, six four batting left. And uh, let's see. That is going to be a fly ball to left field. And so the Giants don't get any runs off of Kramer there. Kramer's not, it's not like Kramer's pitching poorly. It's just that his team isn't getting him any runs. And speaking of them, we are going to lead off with Paul Wehner against Jesse Barnes, who is still out there also because he's also pitching very well. 5-7. And that is going to be a single. So Paul Wehner does manage to get aboard. And again, we have a... a, a see, with the, with the dice tower in the way, I can't see that I left somebody out there. 
So anyway, that are, that's a base hit, and Barnes giving up the hit. And that brings up Glenn Wright. Glenn Wright, they have to get something going here. 6-9, batting right. Um, and that is, is that a home run? Get out of here. Get out of here. Glenn Wright just hit a home run and tied the game. So Barnes gives up another hit, and it's a big one. And for, you know, considering this is the 1920s, and you didn't see home runs like this, there's already been two hit in the game. And Pi Trainer is the batter, and he gets a 2-7, and that's going to be a single for him. So the Pirates now, the Pirates are turning the tables. And now it doesn't look so dumb that they let, um, you know, that they let Ray Kramer bat last inning. George Grantham is up, and he gets a 6-10 batting left, and that's going to be a fly to center. The center fielder for the Giants is a 2-E-14. That is a 1, though. And that is going to be a double, two, a two asterisk double. And are two guys on? No. So that's all it is. Runners are at second and third. And there is still nobody out. And Barnes is just completely falling apart here now, all of a sudden. <clears throat> all of a sudden, he can't get anybody out. And <clears throat> that brings up Joe Harris. And he gets a 3-8, and that is going to be a fly ball left field B, which scores a runner on third. And gives the Pirates the lead now. By the score of 4-3. And only one out, and Johnny Gooch up. And he gets a 1-6, and that's going to be a ground ball first base. And that brings up the pitcher, Ray Kramer. And, of course, they're going to let him hit. And he gets a 6-8 batting right. And uh, that is going to... What in the heck? That is going to be a single double asterisk and score a run. So they really weren't dumb to, to let him stay in because he knocks in the Pirates' fifth run. And Lloyd Wayner back to the top of the order with Lloyd Wayner up. And he gets a 6 9. They are just jacking him. 6 9. And that is going to be a home run. <laughs> Lloyd Wayner. No, wait a minute. No, he's weak. Lloyd Wayner. Who knew? Lloyd Wayner is weak. So he only gets a single double asterisk. And that brings up Barnhart. And Barnhart gets a 6-8. It just doesn't... You don't want to be there if you're Barnes. That is going to be a single double asterisk and score another run. All of a sudden, Barnes just forgot how to pitch. And Paul Wayner is now the batter... And he, uh, I think he start maybe started this whole thing off. I don't know. One eight, and uh, that's a walk to load the bases up. So Barnes is just really, I mean, completely Jekyll and Hyde here. Six five batting right, and that will finally end it. It's a fly ball right field. Yeah. So uh, they, one, two, three, four, five. The Pirates now have six runs. And they have a good 6 3 lead here.
as we go to the bottom of the seventh. And now the Giants have to, there's a sense of urgency now because the Giants really have got to get something going quickly. And they're going to lead off with Earl Smith. You get to 312, that's a fly ball to center. That does bring up uh, Barnes, and they are not going to let Barnes hit because he has just fallen apart out on the mound. Um, they're going to have Dave Robertson pinch hit for him. And he gets a 211, which is, is that really a home run? <laughs> um, let's see. Well, it's a ballpark homer. Yeah, and this, this ballpark is 1-19 to home run, so um, it is a home run for Dave Robertson. And so the Giants get another run at 6-4. Nobody out. Nobody out. Oh, yeah, there is one, buddy, one person out. And Dave Bancroft back to the top of the lineup. And he gets a 3-12, which is a hit by pitch. So now the Giants are trying to make their comeback right here. Heine Grow. Heine Grow gets a 1 8. That's a ground ball double play. So that is going to be the inning. 6 4 3 double play. But the Giants do get a run. Um, so let's see. And let me uh, do all the housekeeping here to. Put everything back the way it needs to be. And uh, get the Giants. Their four spot. So it is 6-4. It is a pretty good game here. Top of the eighth inning. And uh, Pie Trainer um, is the batter. And it, it just in case you were wondering... Kramer's uh, inning of weakness is a is a nine, and that means we do also we have to replace Jesse Barnes on the mound. And they are going to replace Jesse Barnes with Red Causey. So, close the book on Barnes. He goes seven. He goes seven and allows five earned run or uh, six earned runs. And Pie Trainer will be the batter in here in the eighth inning against Causey. And he gets a 211. Causey is a righty. That is going to be a pop out. A pop out to shortstop. Which brings up Grantham. Grantham gets a 4-6 batting left, and that is going to be a walk. So Grantham gets aboard with a walk. That's the first guy allowed on by Causey. And Joe Harris is the batter. Joe Harris gets a 3-2. That's going to be a ground ball double play to third base. So that is a 5-4-3 double play. No runs come in for the Pirates. We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Giants down by two. And uh, Ray Kramer still out there. I mean, that guy, how many innings did he pitch? He's, he got an inning of weakness of nine, and he pitched 226 innings that year which doesn't seem that impressive for the 1920s, but, uh, you know, for now, it would be great. Frankie Frisch is up. 
Frankie Frisch gets a 4-7 batting, um, batting left, and that would be a uh, fly ball center field. So there's one down, and Irish Musial will up. Irish Musial will get the 3-4. Is that, on a, is that a home run, really? Really? It is. It's a home run. Um, no, actually, no, it's not. It's a triple, though. So Irish Musial is only 90 feet away. And now they've got to start worrying because Kramer is, he's starting to pull out his, his uh, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Ross Youngs comes up and he gets a 6-5 batting left. And that's going to be a single double last strict goal, though they don't need that. And it scores the run. Only one out here. Runner at first. High pockets Kelly up. And uh, I'm going to re-roll, well, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to re-roll this. And that is a 6-7 batting right. And that's going to be a fly ball center. Which brings up Casey Stengel. And Casey Stengel gets a 5-10 batting left. And that's going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. The third baseman, as we know, is a 1, but he's an E-21 that is a 19, though, so it's an out. And he goes out 5-3. But the Giants do get another run. And now it is 6-5. And the Pirates come into bat in the ninth. They would like to get another run just to have a little bit of insurance here going to the bottom of the... Um, ninth inning, but Johnny Gooch right now is the batter. He gets a 3-8. That's a ground ball first base. One away. So now it's decision time. Um, because Ray Kramer is up. Do you let Ray Kramer hit? They're not going to. They're gonna, they are going to take Kramer out. And they are going to pinch hit Kiki Kyler. And Kiki Kyler gets a 3-9, which is going to be a triple. So the pinch hitters today are really coming through for these teams. Causey giving up the uh, triple. Which brings up Lloyd Wayner. And he gets a 1-7. That is going to be a line out to second, two away. And now there's two down. And Clyde Barnes is the batter. And he gets a 1-9. And that is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. So uh, the pinch hitter came through, but they still didn't get an out. Or they still didn't get a run. So... Um, no runs for them. Two, three, four, yeah, five. No runs there. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. And uh, the Giants sorely in need of a run. Creamer is now out of the game. So we need another pitcher for the Pirates. And they're going to bring in Mike Zvengross to pitch. And he will face Casey Stengel, I believe, for the Giants. No, Earl Smith. Casey Stengel made the last out. So he's facing Earl Smith. So it comes down to this. The Giants need a run to tie, two to win. 
four seven batting left and that's going to be a ground ball first base that brings up the pitcher spot again and of course they are going to pinch hit for the pitcher And they are going to pinch hit with, oh no, not him, <laughs> not him. Sven Gross is a lefty, so. They're gonna pinch hit with Bill Cunningham. Cunningham, the pinch hitter, can he come through like the other two pinch hitters in this game did? That is a 3-8, and that is going to be a double, and yes, he does. So, <laughs> so uh, now there's a man at second. There is one out, so they're not going to sacrifice because they don't want to get down to just their last out. And technically, he's in scoring position, so Bancroft will be the batter. He gets a 3-5, though, and that's a ground ball first base. And it all comes down to Heine Grow. And Heine Grow gets a 1-11. It's a foul out to the catcher, and that is it. So we had a good one here. Uh, the Giants couldn't get the tying run in the ninth, and so your final score was... Um, Pirates 6, Giants 5 here at the Polo Grounds. And that will be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.